Hey there, this is Dustin from Roland and I'm back at Long & McQuaid and today I'm very excited to show you two brand new Roland boutiques, the JD08 and the JX08. In 2015, we released the first three Roland boutiques, and since then we've added many new models to the lineup, and most of these have been recreations of legendary Roland synthesizers and drum machines of the past. Today it's no different, we're adding two more legendary synths to the boutique collection. First is the JX08. Now the JX08 is a recreation of the JX8P that includes the interface from the PG-800 programmer. And also, we've got the JD-08, and the JD-08 is a recreation of the JD-800, a digital powerhouse from the 90s. We've introduced many new features to these boutiques that are extremely exciting, including greatly expanded polyphony, which actually allows each of these to have two-part multi-timbral functionality. So you can have two completely different patches going at the same time on different MIDI channels. On the JX08, you can have that as a dual and split, and the sequencers in here are greatly updated. They're two parts, so there's two separate sequencers for each of those multi-timbral parts, and there's 64 steps, and they've got tons of interesting features like shuffle, scale settings, undo, redo, random pattern generation, and you can store up to 128 patterns in each. Now there's also a dedicated external clock input on each of these, and this is for connecting with analog drum machines and things like that, modular synthesizers, so you can really synchronize the sequencers or the arpeggiators, of which each of these has one as well, to your external analog gear. And just like the other Roland boutiques, these are battery powered by four AA batteries, or they can be USB powered. This time we've used USB-C connectors. Now the USB also adds some really awesome functionality, which includes audio and MIDI over USB. And of course that includes CC controls two ways from all the controls on the front panel. The audio over USB actually has four stereo channels for each, so you get the master output, you get part one, you get part two, and you also get the external input on its own isolated channel over USB, essentially making each of these like a portable audio interface. Both models still have the built-in mini speaker for using it on the go, and they also are compatible with the K25M optional keyboard and the DK01 dock. Let's jump right in to the JD08 and we'll check out some sounds. So here we have the JD-08. It's got the authentic sound and behavior of the original. As you can hear, it's got very interesting, long kind of evolving sounds that the JD was known for. 
And the JD-08 features 64 original presets from the JD-800, as well as space for up to 256 presets in total, and this includes 21 brand new patches that kind of reimagine the JD in more of a modern context. Now, what makes the JD so special is its unique four-part architecture. So this is not the multi-tambral aspect that we're talking about. We're talking about just the first part. So one part from the JD-08 is the same as a JD-800, but that one sound is actually made up of four separate parts, four separate tones. And really, you can think of those four parts as a unique synthesizer in its own right. So up on the top left, this section is very important for when we're using the JD-08, this patch section. We can see we have tone A, B, C, and D. And we can go ahead and turn those on and off. And let's play this sound, and we'll listen to it all together one more time. So you can hear there's a lot of different stuff going on. Let's turn off everything but tone A, and let's take a listen. Let's take a listen to tone B. So these are each got a lot of movement, but definitely different sounds. Tone C. And tone D. And that one's a bit similar to A and B. So turning them all back on, we're able to edit each tone separately. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can do that. If we press the layer active button, we can simply select which tone is active on the front panel. Now, we can edit one at a time, two at a time, or all of them at the same time. So that means, say we wanted to change the filter cutoff for all four at once. Let's just hold the chord. I change the cutoff frequency. This is affecting all four at the same time because we've got them all selected on the active section. However, if I select just tone A, we're only affecting the cutoff frequency of tone A. So in this sense, we can really go through one at a time, edit our sounds, and truly they are four separate complete synthesizer paths. Now let's take a jump in and we'll listen to a few more sounds and we're gonna take a look at what some of those really unique features of the JD-800 are. Let's move on to another sound. Now this sounds like much more of a traditional kind of pad. And the, you know, the JD-800 was very much known for its ethereal kind of pad sounds. So let's pick this one apart and we'll do a little bit of editing. Quickly take a listen to tone A. It's in the higher register. Tone B, right in the middle. Tone C, it's lower. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna edit tone C. Okay, so we're gonna press the active button and make sure just tone C is active, all right? Now, one very unique aspect of the JD-800 is its envelope section. Now, the envelope section is not your standard ADSR envelope. It's what we call time-variant envelopes. And this allows you to have more than just an ADSR, that is, attack, decay, sustain, release. You have time one, level one, time two, level two, time three, sustain, and time four, and level four. And this level, as you can see in the diagram above, allows you to actually set the level of each stage, not just the time like a traditional ADSR would. So what we're gonna do is tighten this sound up. So on the JD-08, we use the same envelope section to edit the pitch, filter, and amp envelopes. Let's first take a look at just the filter. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down. Add a bit of that envelope. And that's moving quite slow. So I'm gonna tighten this up. I'm gonna make a very quick kind of envelope. And I've got to affect the amp as well to hear that come through. So here we've got more of a kind of quick attack. 
So now let's remember, we're just editing tone C. So if I bring in tone A, B, and D again, we're gonna have the quick attack sound that we just made on tone C, but the rest are still gonna have that swell. Got like a kind of sound. Now another important aspect of programming on the JD-08 similar to the JD-800 is the palette section. Now this is really powerful for quick programming as well as performance. So the way that the palette section works is whichever control you've touched last is now available here for each tone separately. So now let's use cutoff as an easy example. I'm gonna hold the chord and we'll edit the palette. So here, we're only changing the cutoff for tone A and tone B, tone C, tone D. This is a very quick way to sculpt your sound because that's really the essence of the JD-08 is its ability to have these big layers and different types of sounds happening at the same time. Let's move on to another sound. It's a nice 90s EP kind of sound. And of course, the JD-800 helped define the sound of the 90s. You know, at the time when it came out, there were a lot of synthesizers that didn't have very good hands-on controls. And just like you can see on the JD-08, the JD-800 kind of brought the digital synthesizer world back into the feeling of big analog synths with lots of controls. I digress. This patch would be very good to check out the waveforms that are in the JD-800, at least how they're used here. So we can see already that this patch is using three tones, B, C, and D. So tone B is going to be the EP kind of sound as it is, and that's using an EP type waveform. Let's check out tone D. This really has just the kind of attack sound, and this is in the spirit of the D50, which was a predecessor of the JD-800. So I wanna take a look at tone D again. I'm gonna make sure on our active section, we're only editing tone D. Let's take a look at that waveform. You see, all of the original waveforms from the JD-800 are in here, and a lot of them are this kind of attack type waveform. And that's where we were before. And these are really great for these types of hybrid sounds because they allow that kind of quick attack at the beginning and then you can have nice, more kind of subtractive synthesis style swells and more sound designy kind of things happening over top. All right, let's move on to a bass sound. And you can hear that the JD-08 also responds to velocity as well as aftertouch if you're using an external keyboard that has aftertouch on it. Let's take a quick look at the different parts of this. We'll turn off tone B, C, and D. That's more of a kind of sawtooth, regular kind of synth sound. Let's turn on tone B. More of that metallic, punchy kind of sound. Again, the JD-800 was really known for that kind of thing. Then, you've got this kind of very low sound, just filling it out a little bit and then a fat square wave. When you combine them all together, you get that, again, foundation from the more subtractive synthesis kind of sounds, the fat square wave, the sawtooth that we heard on tone A, and then you've got that more metallic kind of punchy sound from the other tone. Let's take a listen to one more sound. This is a very interesting kind of glassy pad, which I love. And one thing you're gonna notice is another really powerful aspect of these envelopes is that when I release the keys, something happens. So the sound's sustaining, got a lot of nice subtle movement, and then as soon as I let go, the release of the envelopes brings in another part. So we won't get too much into how to program this kind of stuff today because the JD-08 goes very deep, as you can hear. 
but that's a really important part of the sounds is that kind of ethereal kind of movement you can get from the envelopes as well as the LFO section. So you know that the LFO section is providing a lot of that kind of movement and the envelope provides the nice release. And the envelopes, as we've seen, can go to the amp, which is the volume, the filter, and the pitch. Now, let's look at one more sound, and we'll check out the pitch envelope. And again, this sound uses the release of the pitch envelope to do a really cool trick. Let's play a different chord here. So we're sustaining. How cool is that? So, you can hear that the pitch of each of these waveforms is changing only when we release the keys and it's kind of finding a new home at the end. So, as we know, if we want to edit all of these at the same time, all the tones, we'll turn them on in the active section and I'm going to set the envelope to pitch and because we know that it's just happening on the release when we let go of the keyboard, that pitch envelope is taking effect. Instead of going two different directions like we heard, let's make it just go all the way up and take a listen to that. Really cool, and it found its home octaves up in the same notes. That's really neat. Love that. And of course, we have the filters here as well. We won't go too in-depth, but each of these tones has its own filter with its own settings, and that's multi-mode. So we have high pass, band pass, low pass, with its own resonance, of course its own envelopes, key follow, LFO, all that. And the amplifier section, also has some really interesting features that we don't have too much time to go into today, but things like bias, which allow you to have a higher volume up or down the keyboard, really. So the JD-800 was really kind of player focused with uh, all of the LFO delays and fades, really interesting things that react to how you play the instrument. We've also included a faithful recreation of the unique effects section from the JD-800. So if we take a look at the effects, we have Distortion, phaser, a spectrum, and an enhancer. And then we also have a second section which has delay, chorus, and reverb. And what's really interesting about these is you can change the order of both of those sections. So as you can see, we can put distortion, phaser, spectrum, and then enhancer, or we can put enhancer, then spectrum. We can rearrange it however we want. Same thing is true for the other section, which can get really fun because you can go chorus, delay, reverb, which would be your standard kind of way. But then if we move it around, we can do things like reverb into chorus and then delay, which you can imagine get some really interesting kind of results. Now let's switch it up and we're going to check out the JX08.
So quickly, if you'll remember what I mentioned about the JD800 in its time being kind of a return to the hands-on aspect of programming synthesizers like you had in more vintage analog synthesizers, the JX8P, when it was released, it was guilty of not having the greatest user interface. It used membrane buttons as opposed to a lot of sliders. So at the time, we had the PG800 programmer, which you could connect to the JX8P with a DIN cable, and that gave you much more hands-on control for programming your own sounds and performing. Now on the JX08 Boutique, we've incorporated a lot of those controls from the PG800 right on the front panel. So you can get hands-on right away, create your own patches and perform. So let's take a listen and take a little tour of the JX08. We have two oscillators, DCOs, that's digital controlled oscillators. And that doesn't mean that they're not analog. They were analog oscillators. They were just controlled with the clock frequency from a digital component. So we've got two of them we can mix together on the mixer here, DCO1, DCO2. Let's open up the filter a bit. We've got your standard kind of waveforms on both. We've got sawtooth, let's listen to just DCO1. Sawtooth, pulse, square, and noise. And DCO2, you have the exact same options. You've got your range switches, your tuning, and you can adjust those however you want. Now, let's turn up DCO2 a bit. Change that fine tune a little bit, get a little bit wavy. Something really interesting about the JX is that we have this envelope setting for the mixer. Now what this can do, now I'm gonna switch it to noise to prove this point. I'm just going to increase the envelope and this will actually use envelope one or two, of which we have two to control over here, to actually introduce the sound of DCO2 based on the envelope shape. Isn't that neat? So we got it set to envelope one. So instead of having to turn up DCO2 on the mixer, we can dynamically introduce that sound using one of the envelopes. And I'm gonna use that for the sound. So we've got this little bit of noise coming in up first. You hear that? We've got a bit of delay, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Now, DCO2 has some interesting settings. Let's turn it back to a uh, sawtooth wave. And we have the cross mod section. It has X mod and sync. Let's take a listen to sync. So this will be a hard sync of DCO2 to DCO1. And to really hear that, we're also going to introduce some of the envelope. And we'll use envelope 1 again to change the tune of DCO1. Sound like this. But when we turn sync on, Turn that down, and we'll change the pitch of DCO1 because it's syncing DCO2. Get that classic hard sync sound. All right, let's get back to more of a standard patch like we had before. Turn that envelope off. Moving along, we've got the VCF section. Beautiful filter here. Add some resonance. And right below, we've got our envelope amount. And again, we can choose which filter we're using and the polarity. We can say, let's use envelope one and we'll apply it in a positive manner. So opening up that filter, we make it inverted. It'll be moving the opposite direction. You can hear it closing the filter first, then opening afterwards. Let's set that back. We've got a very, very useful high pass filter. Which is great to get your patch sitting in a mix better if you don't need all that low end. So we've got that built right in there on the synth. And of course, we've got our VCA level. We've got how we're opening the VCA either with envelope two. Let's get some long release. Similar to an SH-101, we've got the gate control, which will just turn the VCA off as soon as the key is released. And that's great for certain types of programming as well. 
Now, of course, the envelopes are your standard ADSRs, and they've got key follow, which will allow you to have different timing for those stages based on where you're playing along the keyboard. Now, one extremely exciting aspect of the JX08 is the added effects. So you'll see here, we do have classic chorus. <laughs> But we've also added reverb and 17 brand new effects. So if we press the two chorus buttons together and hold this down, take a look at some of the effects we have. Really exciting. So we can change our effects type and each part, remember there's two parts on this multi timbral synth, same as the JD08. Each part has its own MFX, so its own standard effects, of which we can choose from what we're about to look at, but then the reverb is shared between the two. Let's take a look at some of these added effects. We've got three different types of delay. We've got choruses, three choruses, three delays. So delay. We've got a reverse delay, which is really fun. Overdrive fuzz, a regular drive, a bit crusher. It's really neat. Lo-fi compressor, which is great when you're making percussive sounds. A phaser. Second phaser. A filter, which is totally separate from the synth engine's filter. Pitch. And we can change our settings here. Course tune of this pitch. Let's take a look. Put it to an octave. Change the fine tuning, of course, as well. And we've got feedback on this. It's like a pitch shifting delay. It gets pretty wild. cool. All right, let's switch up. Pitch two, bit of a different take on the pitch shifter. And there you have it, lots of brand new effects. For this, let's just leave on some basic delay. So, just like with the JD-08, the JX-08 has a lot of the original patches in there. It has 32 of the original presets, plus 111 new presets that are modern, and it's got a total memory, like the JD, of 256 patches. Let's take a listen to some of these other patches. And that's one of those ones that I was mentioning, it was kind of like almost getting into like digital territory. Digital sounding, of course. All right, let's move on. It's a great kind of classic tuned second oscillator up a fifth. All right, let's check out some more. That's a really neat sound. Moving on, and you'll hear that sound remained, carried over, when I selected the next sound. Let's pay attention to that again with this sound. This is a nice, interesting pad. I'll select the next patch, and we'll hear this release continue. Here we go. I can even hold that on the keyboard when I switch back to it. On to the next. Really big kind of brassy pad sound. And a few more. And the JX is really known for great brass pads. And 
finally, one more. Very classic JX sound. I'd also like to point out that on both of the new boutiques, if you want to play without a keyboard attached, you can simply press the note button and play using the 16 buttons on the front panel. All right, I'd like to take a look at the arpeggiator now. And remember, the arpeggiator is on both the JX and the JD. So what's really interesting about the arpeggiator is that it's got its independent settings per part. So that means you can have different arpeggiator settings or an arpeggiator on for one and not the other. Let's take a look. We'll pull up a different kind of sound here. Okay, so on part A, we've got this sound. What I want to do is make this more of a swelling kind of pad sound. So, very quickly, let's go to our envelopes. Okay, and I'm going to turn off that noise. Let's make that a sawtooth. Okay, and add some release. Bit too much. There we are. So here's our sound on part A. And part B. Got this nice hard sync sound. Let's turn the filter down a bit on part B. Perfect. And it's got the reverse delay on it. I like that. So, switching over to part A, let's turn on the arpeggio and we'll take a listen. All right? And we're going to go to part B and we'll also turn on the arpeggio. Take a listen. And this is especially powerful when you use the dual mode on the JX08. So if we press dual, you'll hear that we can hear both sounds at once, controlled by the keyboard. Right, so let's go to part A and we'll turn off the arpeggio, okay? And we're gonna have it just on part B, but we're still gonna hear part A. So that's a really interesting performance tool to have the arpeggio on one and not on the other. But also, let's take a look at some of the arpeggio settings. So we're gonna go to part A, we're already there, and we're gonna tighten this up a bit, make it an, a plucky sound again. So now it sounds like one sound, but as a matter of fact, we've got both going. I'm gonna go ahead on part B and turn off that reverse delay, just for clarity. Okay, so turning the arpeggiator on for both. Great, now let's take a look at the settings. So under arpeggio, we can go ahead and change the rate for each, the mode, the shuffle. Let's change the rate on part A to quarter notes. So there you hear that they're moving separately, but they got the same note input. Let's try it on eight. Neat. And then we've got more settings like mode as well. So up is where we're on right now. It can move down, up and down, random, or in the note order. Let's try note order. So as you can start to imagine, you get some really interesting types of combinations. We've got shuffle, we've got resolution, and the octave. So let's just change the octave on part A. And that's the last one we're gonna look at. Let's put it to two octaves. And we'll play around. So you hear part A is playing around a lot more, moving up the octaves. Or part B, has still got the very basic arpeggio setting, just going up. So you can imagine the types of things that you can program using this. Of course, you can put hold on for both or either of the parts arpeggiators as well.
Next, let's check out the step sequencer. And for that, we're gonna bring the JD back in the mix. All right, to start, we're gonna look at how to program the sequencer on the JX08. And really, it's almost the exact same on the JD08. Just a couple different button locations. But I think we're gonna get across exactly what we need to understand by using it on the JX. And we'll bring in the JD08 afterwards with some of its own sequences, and we'll combine the two for some pretty cool results. So, as we understand, these are both two-part multi-timbral synthesizers. So, the sequencer has two separate parts as well. So I've already got a sequence running for part A on the JX. Let's take a listen. And if I hold down the sequencer button, we can quickly take a look at just a few of the options for the sequencer. We've got shuffle, we've got scale, got sequence length. So this is set to 16 steps. So it's just a one bar sequence. We've got direction, we can have that forwards, reverse, and a bunch of different options. We've got our CC, we can duplicate. So say we have one bar, we can make that two bars and then keep editing from there. We've got a lot more, including random sequence generation, which is really fun. Great way to get some ideas together. So there's lots more settings, but let's stick with these for now. So what I wanna do is first off, sequence a part on part B to go along with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and press part B so that I can hear and play that second sound. Let's close the cutoff a little bit. So I'm gonna go press sequence and you can see it's completely blank on the 16 buttons here. I wanna make sure that the sequence is long enough. So what I wanna do is hold down that sequence button again and take a look at step length. And I got it set to 64 because I want part A to be 16 steps and part B to be 64 steps. Okay. So there's three different ways that you can sequence on the new boutiques. First is very straightforward. Simply hold down the step that you want to input and play a note. Let's take a listen to that. As easy as that. And if we hold down each step, we see that we can change the velocity per step, as well as the gate length per step. That's very powerful because both of these synthesizers are velocity sensitive for things like the filter and of course the volume, and the gate length can also really affect how the envelopes work. And that's very powerful. So that's per step. Let's delete that. We can of course clear everything out if we want very quickly from the menu, but that was quick enough. The second way to sequence is step recording. And this is very similar to say an SH-101. So we can just hold down the step we want and we press start. Now check this out. We can play notes in sequential order and add some rests as we go. Rest, rest, rest. Rest, rest. And let's take a listen to that. Very cool. That's very easy as well. We can look at the different pages, because remember this is a 64 step sequence, but right now I've just programmed the first bar. We can switch through the pages like this. I'm gonna go ahead and use that shortcut I mentioned before to go ahead and go all clear, which is gonna clear the entire sequence from just that part. Great. Now the third and final way to sequence on the boutiques is to do real-time sequencing. And to do that, we just want to hold note and press start. So now, as I play in on the keyboard, it's going to record into the sequencer. Check this out. I made a mistake on the second note. So let's just go ahead, change that, and it should have grabbed it right on the downbeat there. Nice. Very cool. Now, something else that we've added on the new boutiques for the sequencer is motion recording. So for that, I'd like to actually go back to part A. Let's take a look at part A, and of course, we know that it's this chord sound. 
So motion sequencing allows us to sequence up to four parameters from the front panel as well. So we can do that in real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn off part B because I just wanna really hear what we're doing with the motion sequencer. So to do that, I'm just gonna hold down start, press B and you see that's flashing. That's essentially muted now. So we're only gonna hear part A. And I'm gonna go ahead and enter into that real-time recording that we just saw in part B, and I'm gonna twiddle some of the settings and you'll hear that that gets input into the sequencer. So hold down note, press start. Check this out. So that change that I made on the cutoff is now in the sequence. Added some resonance as well. And you can do up to four of these at once. And if you've done something you don't want, you can go into sequence settings again, and instead of clearing all, we can clear just the CC, just the motion recording. Go ahead and press that, and there we are. We're back to where we were before. So there you have it. Very, very powerful polyphonic step sequencer with two parts and lots of different options. And you can really get some interesting stuff playing back and forth between the two parts, different lengths, different directions. And of course, you can interact with that dynamically while you're performing and while you're creating. So now I'd like to bring in the JD with its own sequences, of course, two parts. So two parts on each. So we're gonna have two parts coming from the JD, two parts coming from the JX. And I've already created this sequence before. Let's dissect it a little bit and hear what's going on. You'll notice that I have a MIDI cable going from the output of the JD into the input of the JX, and that's gonna make sure that they're synchronized. And I have my settings set like that. So the JD is synchronizing the JX. So when I press play here, we're gonna start the sequence immediately over here. Not only that, I've got the audio from the JD going into the mix input of the JX. So all the audio is being mixed through the JX going to the output. And I'd like to reiterate that if this was hooked up to a computer, you would be able to record just the JD by itself from that mix in input. Now that's really cool, little audio interface, just a reminder. So what I wanna do first, like we saw before, is just mute some of the sequences. So I'm gonna mute both parts on the JX. Let's just take a listen to the JD. What's that, you might think? Sounds like a drum kit. Well, yes, the JD-800 and the JD-08, having so many interesting sampled waveforms, those percussive waveforms that we looked at before, you can create some pretty interesting synthesized drums with these. And that's exactly what we've done here. Now, we don't have time to go in and really look at how we did all the sound design. However, let's take a look at the sequencer. So I'm gonna turn off part B, just to take a listen to part A. And part B is, doing like a kind of kalimba-like sound, but the main drum kit is on part A. So how we did this is using a feature of the JD that's very powerful and that's keyboard ranges. So you can set a keyboard range for each tone. So remember there's four tones. So essentially what we have is we have the C is playing a kick drum, and then we've got more of a kind of snare drum playing on this note, and then up higher, We've got a hi-hat kind of sound. So that's very cool. So just by sequencing those different notes, we essentially have different parts of the drum kit. And that's exactly how we created this sequence. And remember, it's polyphonic, right? So you can have a kick and a hi-hat on the same step. It's just two notes. Let's go ahead and take a listen to just part B, which is that kalimba kind of sound. And you might notice something interesting about that as well, because this kalimba sound actually has only six steps. So, you know, when you have two separate sequencers, they can be different lengths. So I've got this kalimba, as you can see, set to six steps. And when we hear that against the drums, it makes an interesting kind of rhythmic combination. Great. Now let's take a look at what we've got going on on the JX. So using the same trick, just to mute parts and unmute them, let's take a listen to part B, and we'll press play. Just 
just muted the JD. So we've got this really nice chorusy bass sound going on here. All right, I'm gonna unmute part A. Very cool. Bring this back in. Awesome. Now, the last thing you might have noticed is that that pad sound we have on the JX, it's like the sequence was longer than four bars. And, you know, we know that we can set it to 64 steps, which is four bars, but 64 steps is four bars only when you're counting each step as a 16th note, right? So, you know, we've got this trick on the JD where we've got different lengths of sequence. So you've got that interesting rhythmic stuff. But on the JX, let's take a quick look under our sequence menu here. Let's take a look at the scale setting. So for part B, we've actually got the scale set to eight. So that means eighth note. So that means that for every step, it's actually moving an eighth note. So we'll just take a really quick look at how that actually looks when you're moving along the sequencer. So here we'll see the sequencer moving at a certain rate. <laughs> Okay, and then if we go over to part B, which is the bass part, you're going to see it moving at a much faster rate because it's set to sixteenths. So cool. As you can see, there's so much palette for sound in the JD with those percussive waveforms. We've got that drum kit. Of course, we could have a drum kit plus a synth part because, you know, as I said, the JD is so well known for those ethereal big pad kind of sounds. But really for this demonstration, I wanted to show off that percussive nature, really, really punching through. And also the distortion is on that drum kit, which really gives it a lot more character. And uh, we could add more. We could even add like, you know, phasers, whatever we want from that interesting original JD effect section. Then we got the JX doing a fat, kind of creamy, chorusy bass line, and then this nice kind of resonant sawtooth pad over top, you know, really like we're kind of swimming underwater in some electro kind of ocean. Really, really fun. So these features really allow for a lot of creative output and really so much out of just one piece. You know, we're using these together, but just with one of these, you can be sequencing internally two different parts, you can be sequencing externally, of course, you can have different MIDI channels. And when you combine all of this with the external clock in with some of your analog gear or other Roland boutiques like the TR-06 or the TR-08, the creative possibilities are absolutely huge. So thanks so much for joining us today to check out the two brand new Roland boutiques. Definitely a huge step forward in the boutique line. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn more about the JD-08 or the JX-08, make sure to click the links in the description to check out longamcquade.com.